So today I'm going to explain you about the nomenclature of carbon compounds. So as I told you earlier, nomenclature means naming of carbon compounds. Uh, parents, in order to keep a name for their children, they do consider many things, right? Like what is the date of birth? What is the time of birth? And which name will be better for their children? So they consider many things in order to keep a name for their children. Similarly, in order to give a name for a carbon compound, we also consider certain rules. And according to those rules, we give a name for a particular carbon compound. So let us see what is required for naming of a carbon compound. So we require root word. That is the number of carbon atoms that are present in a given compound. And a prefix which indicates the substituent that is present. And the suffix which indicates the presence of a functional group. So what is this prefix suffix? In order to understand that, let me give you an example. Let us consider a name, Tirumala. So what is the name of the lady here? Is it Miss or is it Tirmala or is it Anusha? What is the main name of the lady here? Anusha. Very good. The name of Anusha. You can see Miss, right? So which is written before, that can be considered as a prefix. And which is written after, that can be considered as suffix. So did you understand now? The main part can be considered as a root word. Even in the naming of a carbon compound, the main part of the name is root word. And as you can see here, Anusha belongs to which family? Thirumala family. Her initial is T. What does the T represent? It represents the family Thirumala. In a common way, we say family for a person. But for carbon compounds, the family can be considered as a functional group. Technically, what is a family for a carbon compound? It is the functional group. So functional groups of carbon compounds are considered under suffix and the substituents are considered under prefix and the main part of the compound is considered as a root word. So let us discuss all these three in detail one by one. So what is root word? So this is the name that is considered for the number of carbon atoms in a given compound. For example, if there is one carbon atom in the given compound, the name that is considered is myth. If there are two carbon atoms, the name that is considered is eighth. And if it is three, the name will be probe. And if it is four, the name will be butte. And if it is five, the name will be pent. And that is how it will go on. So what is root word here? It is a name that is considered for number of carbon atoms. So let us understand this root word with different examples. So try to observe this structure. So how many atoms do you see here? So one, two, three, four. So we have four carbon atoms, right? So what is the name that is considered for these four carbon atoms? It is butte. So our root word is butte. Now let me take one more example. Try to find out the root word for this. So as you can see here, how many number of carbon atoms do you see here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and shall I write 6 here? Do we have 6 carbon atoms? Of course we have but this 6 carbon atoms are not considered in the root word. Why it is I will tell you. So if you observe the first structure, if you try to represent in a simple way, this is a linear structure. But if you observe the second structure, it is a branched structure like this. Whenever we have branched structures, we need to consider the structure in two different ways. Like we consider a parental chain and we also consider a daughter chain. As if you see here, the carbon atoms that I am considering in the box, they come under the root word because the longest chain will be considered as the parental chain. And you can see here CH3 group, which is attached to the second carbon atom, that will be a part of daughter chain. So whenever you have branched structures, we need to consider which is a parental chain and which is the daughter chain. And for deciding the root word, you have to count only the number of carbon atoms that are present in the parental chain. Now, as you can see here, how many carbon atoms do we have in the parental chain? Only five, right? So the root word will be pent. Then what about this CH3? That will be a part of prefix. 
and that is considered as a substituent. Is this clear? That is a branch. Yes, that will be a part of prefix. Is prefix. Are you clear with root word? And how to consider the root word in given structures? If it is a linear structure, no problem. Everything is well and good. Directly, you can consider the total number of carbon atoms. But if it is a branched structure, you need to consider only the carbon atoms that are present in the parental chain. Okay. Now, let us go for the second part of naming. That is prefix. So, what is prefix? As I told you, this is something which we are going to write before the root word. There are two kinds of prefix. Primary prefix and secondary prefix. So, as the name indicates, primary means among the prefix. When you are writing the prefix, which prefix you have to consider first? Primary prefix first. Secondary means this is the one which you have to consider next. Okay. Primary prefix will be considered only for closed structures. Primary prefix will exist only for closed structure children. This will not exist for open structures. For example, so how is this structure? It is just like in the form of a triangle, right? So this is closed. For this kind of closed structures, we have primary prefix. And the primary prefix that is considered is the word cyclo. And this will be absent if the structure is open. As you can see in the earlier case, where we have worked out the root word, the two structures are open structures. They are not closed, right? So there we don't have primary prefix. But if you see here, this structure, this is closed. For this kind of compounds, we will be having primary prefix. And what is the primary prefix? It is cyclo. Now let us move to the secondary prefix. Secondary prefix will indicate the substituents that are attached to the carbon atoms. Generally, we consider two kinds of substituents. One is halogens and the other is alkyl groups. I uh, hope you can remember when we are working out the root word, as you can see here, we have a daughter chain, CH3, right? So this is a part of alkyl and its name is methyl. What is this actually? Methyl. So this methyl can be considered as a substituent. And what are halogens? In periodic table, we had seen 7th A group family, right? The members of this group, that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, they are considered as halogens. Okay. Alkyl, if it is present, its name will be taken as it is. For suppose methyl group is present, we take it as methyl only. For suppose if ethyl group is present, we take it as ethyl only. There is no change in the name of an alkyl substituent. But if we have a substituent like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, that if it is a halogen present, then the name that is considered is halo. Is this clear? Secondary prefix generally speaks about substituents. We consider two kinds of substituents. One is halogen and the other is alkyl group. Halogens, how their name should be written? Their name should be written as halo and alkyl, it is written as it is. Now let us work out some examples on this prefix. Try to identify the prefix in this. What are the prefix? What are the substituents that are attached here? You can see here chlorine is a substituent which is belonging to halogen family. Here also chlorine and we have one methyl group. Now, whenever you have more than one substituent, you have to consider a rule called. So you need to consider what rule? You need to consider the lowest sum rule. What is this lowest sum rule? I'll tell you. So try to give the numbering for these carbon atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. We don't consider the numbering for the methyl group that is present here because it is a branched structure and this CH3 will be a part of daughter chain. Okay. Now, we have chloro substituent and we also have methyl substituent. And what is the root word here? Hept is the root word. But here comes the question like, we have two substituents that is chlorine and methyl. But which substituent must be written first? Chlorine or methyl? In that case, we need to follow the alphabetical order. Okay. So, chlorine, which is starting with C. This C is alphabetically coming first, right? So, chloro substituent must be written first. And where is this chlorine? 
it is present at second carbon atom. Okay. So, I will be keeping two. But do we have only one chlorine or two chlorines? We have two chlorines, right? So, I should mention di. And that second chlorine is also present on the same position that is two. So, what will be the prefix name for this chlorine? That is two comma two dichloro. Chlorine is a substituent and there are two chlorines. So, you are using di and their positions are at second carbon atom. So, you will be writing two comma two. Okay. So, if it is number, you will be separating it with a comma. And if it is number and a letter, you will be separating with a hyphen. And where is this methyl group that is attached to which carbon atom? Fifth carbon atom. So, you will be writing 5 here. So, what will be the prefix now? This is 2 comma 2 dichloro 5 methyl. Is this clear prefix part? You can also number this like this. You can start from right and you can go towards the left. But check here, when you go from right to left, what is the position of methyl? 3. And what is the position of two chlorines? First chlorine is 6. Even the second chlorine is also 6. And what is the sum of this total? 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. What are the positions? 2, again 2 and again it is 5. What is the total of this? This is 9. Which sum is least here? 9 is least, right? So that is when you go from left to right, you are getting the least sum. That is called lowest sum rule. The name indicates the sum must be least. Then your numbering is correct. You can number the carbon atoms either from left to right or from right to left. But which is correct? The one which is giving the lowest sum, that is correct. Okay. Now, which I have written this from left, I mean right to left, that is wrong. Which is the correct numbering here? From left to right is the correct numbering. Is this clear? Any doubts? No doubts? Okay, then thank you for the session. Have a nice day.